Okay then, what we're going to look at here is color grading using DaVinci Resolve as it is the better of the two programs for color grading. And I'll just show you some of the different clips we'll be using. You can see that they need a little bit of color work in them. And we'll put them on the timeline. And for these I'm going to eliminate the soundtracks because I don't need them on there. Good, so now I'm going to cut a couple of these in half because I want you to be able to see the difference. I'll cut this one in half and this one in half for reasons you'll see. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into color. And you'll see here on the timeline um, it's made a copy of each of the different clips. And you can click on timeline to have your timeline here or not. It doesn't really matter. And you'll see up here automatically when you when you turn on color, you get these nodes here. And with the nodes, you can put a number of nodes for each clip. And with each node, you'll do something a little bit different uh, when it comes to color grading and working with things like saturation and others. And if you don't have any nodes, the way you create a node would be Option S, and you get one node. And remember here, I'm using all Mac commands on PCs. They'll be a little bit different. So I'm going to want three nodes in here. And then each node, I'm going to name something a little bit different. So you click on here, and then you do a right click, and you put a node label. And this one I want to be high, medium, low. So I'll do H slash M slash L. This node, I want it to be contrast and saturation. And this node will be for working with color. There you go. Now, in each node, you can do something a little bit different. And this allows you to kind of separate all of the different operations that you're doing. So we can start off with contrast and saturation. You might want a little bit higher contrast in there. And here you see two numbers, and you can get two different platforms that we're looking at. One would have contrast and hue and saturation. The other has a number of really interesting tools for uh, micromanaging different levels of the uh, image. Okay, so we'll go to one. We're going to just bump the contrast up a little bit and perhaps the saturation a little bit higher. Okay, now we're going to go to the HML. And one of the things that we want to work on is perhaps the brights are a little bit too bright and we can bring sort of the lower colors up a little bit or down. And then we can work on uh, the mid-range colors also. So here, lift is where you work with the lower end colors. Gain the higher end. Gamma is the mid-range. So as we're in HML, we can use either of these tools, but we're going to switch over to number two. And let's say you want to bring the shadows up a little bit, um, a little bit more color with the shadows, and bring the highlights down so that perhaps the sun is a little bit less bright. And this is a very interesting tool, is the mid-range detail. And with this, you can actually bump up the details you see in here, or you can fog them out. So if we rise, raise this a little bit, the mid-tone detail, you can see that things become a little bit sharper in the middle, or you can lower it down, it becomes very fuzzy. So it depends if you want kind of a, a soft look or a harder look. And then we can, um, with these tools, we can lift up the entire bottom end if we like, or we can lower it. And here we can lift up the top end or lower it. And here's the mid-range. 
Now, if you want to kind of check on what you've done here and just look at this without the, the effects that you've done, you can do Shift D and it just has a bypass there so you can see what changes you've done and you Shift D again to reestablish what you've done. Or you can take any of these individual nodes and then you can actually um, just check on those and you do Command D and Command D will undo that particular node and then Command D again will bring it back in. And then we're going to work a little bit on the color here. And there's a number of different ways that you can work with color. And we're going to be using um, these wheels here to kind of change them a little bit. So first of all, you could just actually work with, you can go down here and work with either temperature um, or the hue. You can change the hue and move this back and forwards. And, and with saturation and hue, 50 is the mid-range, so if you want to get it back to where it was, you can just um, type in 50 again. So you can lean this more towards the red or a little bit more towards green or red. You can move with this. So I'll just put that back at 50. Now you can work with colors depending if you want to work with the high range or the low range. So let's say you just want to work with the darker bits. You could turn those a little bit more red. But at the same time, you may want the higher end colors to be a little bit more blue. And the mid-range colors, you can turn kind of any sort of uh, color that you'd like. Or you can go into number two here, and you can work a little bit more with the temperature. You can warm the entire thing up, or you can cool the entire thing down. And again, zero would just be the mid-range. But I think we'll warm this up a little bit. And then... You, again, you can change the tint somewhat if you like here. Okay, so that's the first clip. Okay, then we're going to continue. Um, just so you know, on your different panels here, you can do different things. This button here is if you want to put keyframes, but this is where you have the scopes. And with the scopes, you can really look at the three color patterns here, the red, green, and blue, and see how they're working. It's just a way of determining how you're working with color. And again, up here are your nodes. In this window, you could actually work with masking and drawing curves and things or you can just look at the various color bars but we'll probably want to work with the various curves here and again with the curves you can just have this that curve line there you can work on hue versus hue hue versus saturation hue versus luminosity luminosity versus saturation etc even in this panel we just want to work with the wheels but you can change it to color bars the color checker but that's what we're working on there okay what I've done here in each of these you'll see I've already put the nodes in and again remember that to create a new node it's option s and if you want to delete one let's say you don't like what you've done you can delete it and just put another node back in there each one of these uh, this one I didn't put the labels in, and I'll show you why, because you can copy and paste from another. So we're going to work on this one of the two. Um, that one is already close to the color we want. These are not identical clips, though. They were taken at different times. With this scene, which was out of my office window from a number of years ago, before we actually built that monstrosity, and I'm going to mess a little bit with this clip and kind of turn it into a different sort of feel. I, again, I'm going to first work with contrast, number one here, and saturation actually. I want to boost the saturation a bit because it is a little bit unsaturated and we don't really need any more contrast. But first we're going to go into the high, medium, and low. And one of the things, because there's a lot of shadows here, I really want to bring up kind of the, uh, the lower end. And I can do it again with this wheel. Or uh, with the lower end, I could just choose a certain color and bring that up a little bit. But I also want the shadows to actually bring those shadows up. And I find this is the best tool, not so much just for the lower registers, but really the shadowy parts. And it uh, pulls them up a little bit. 
But for the midtone detail, I mean, we could really sharpen that up. But I want to do the opposite. I want to make this really, really fuzzy. And it's a way of making it sort of minimizing some of the focus, but it doesn't defocus the entire thing, just certain things around the mid range. And then you could bring the top end down a little bit if you like, to make it feel a bit later in the afternoon. And then we're going to go to the color. And I want you to watch the scopes here and see as they, as I change the temperature. And this is where you can really see how the scopes kind of measure your change. So as I make it a lot warmer, you can see the red rises, the green kind of stays in the middle and the blue lowers. And also if I'm working with the tint, you'll see one pushes it both towards red and blue and the other towards the green. So we'll have a little bit more red and blue in there. And uh, now you can actually see quite a, a sort of different feel to it. Not only does it look a little bit warmer, but it looks like it's become a little bit more dreamy. Uh, be careful how you use this, though. And once again, it only defocuses some of it, like the branches in the front stay quite sharp. And once again, if you want to see what it's like without all that, you can just click Shift-D and then Shift-D again to bring it up. Or if you want to get rid of that soft focus, you can go to the high, the high, medium, low, and then just do Command D, get rid of that, and you'll see it gives it a very different look. Now then, we're going to move to another clip here, and this is this rather dark and gloomy uh, winter scene that we want to brighten up. With here, if you want to get rid of some of the clutter here, you could just click on Media Pool and it will disappear, or if you want it back again. Same with timeline, if you like to have a little bit of a cleaner set and a slightly larger uh, viewer here. So again, um, we're going to start. And one thing I've already done is I've already put in the nodes here. There's three of them and I've already put the labels in. Okay, so we're going to start again with the contrast and saturation. It's already fairly contrasty, so we don't need to have more contrast. We go into number one here for the contrast, but it could use a little bit more saturation. I mean, the colors are a little bit dim. Okay, next thing we're going to do is go into the highs, mediums, and lows, because that's where it really needs a lot of work. Again, click number two here to bring up the highlights and the shadows and things. And this is where you could uh, really bump the shadows up a little bit. They're pretty dim in there. All of those dark colors this brings it up and again if you want to also work with the bottom end in bringing not just the tonality but all of the colors up you can do it with this but we've already I think established enough there and then let's move to the color here because this brought it up kind of pretty well to the point that we want the low end and you also might want a little bit more mid-range detail kind of sharpen things up You'll see like in the tree in the sky get a little bit more detail and then let's move to the colors and we perhaps want this just a little bit warmer not too much and let's say you want let's say the sky to be a little bit bluer but you want this to be a little bit redder what you can work on here in the color is in the low end which is again the lift you could just drag the color adjuster just slightly towards the red you can see that kind of everything is going to turn a little bit red if you do but still the lower end and then the higher end in the gain bring that more a little bit more to the blue then you create a little bit more color contrast here now if you want to this is uh, part of the same clip if you want to actually carry over all of these color adjustments to this clip here, I'll do it and then I'll undo it because you may want to do slightly different adjustments. So click on this one and then take one of the nodes and then just do Command C or it would be like up here, Edit, Copy. So we do Command C and then click on this one and just do Command V. And it will take all of the information that you have uh, put into here and transpose it. Command C again, and then Command V, 
and then with the color command C and command V now if you want um, you could just start further adjusting these colors but I just want to undo that so I can work on these a little bit separately so I've just undid everything there okay again we start with the if you want then you can put the labels in here again this is you do right click or control click put a new label on there and here again color just so you know what you're working on okay so with this one uh, again number one here um, the contrast would be okay a little bit more saturation because there's very few colors in there and I don't think you need more contrast because uh, I think we've got enough in there so we'll put that back just to so we got the contrast and the increase saturation we need and then we'll go to the high medium and low once more and this is where we can really bump up the shadows and this is where you're gonna see where the mid-tone details come in if you look at the clouds here this is kind of in the mid-tones uh, it's really good for bringing up kind of more details and things like the clouds so you can see the difference there it more sharply defines those clouds if you want to bring a little bit down the highlights if this is a little bit too bright you can bring that down slightly and then we'll again go to the color and we really do want to bump up a little bit more reds a little bit higher here and the gain the blues a little bit higher but these are all just micro adjustments and if we want to see once more what the entire thing looks like without the changes it's shift D and you can see that what we brought up in here so more detail a little bit more color and so you'll see these color changes are a little bit different in each one once again I could have just transposed all of these colors into that but I wanted to do something a little bit different here if you just want to check on the colors here and see how they came out you would just need to click on here and do shift D and you can see how that's changed and then again each individual one you just do command D and see how all of these different changes were some of them fairly subtle and some of them fairly profound okay now we're going to go to the water here and do some other changes maybe working a little bit more with the curves so once more we'll go to the saturation and we again it's quite contrasty so we don't need any additional contrast it looks kind of grim and we want to turn this from kind of a a winter day into a summer day so you bump up the saturation a little bit here and then you go into the high lows and I think that you want to bump the lows up just a little bit and I think we'll do it overall with the lift which is the lower end and also we want shadows brought up just a tiny bit and the mid-range detail we want that to be a bit sharper or if you like it much softer for a softer color day you could do that so we'll bump up those and then now we want to go right to the color and one of the reasons that I wanted the saturation is because I want to change the color of these into something a little bit more summer like and we're going to go to the other curves here the hue versus hue or actually we're going to go to hue versus saturation we're going to take this color and just saturate it a little bit more so you can see it's brought that saturation up and you might even want to narrow it just a little bit okay and also the blue here we want a little bit more saturated so that looks a little bit more kind of summery and then now we go back to the hue versus hue and we want to turn this kind of more green so again we'll click on to here you could turn it blue if you like but maybe just a tiny bit more green so it looks a little bit more summery and then sorry the high end a little bit more towards the blues and possibly even the mid-range there you go so the blues and the greens made it cooler and then we had a little bit additional temperature so it still makes it more summery but we have the green and the blues in there there you go if you want to see what that looks like without the changes you just do shift D again so you can see it's brought up the color and change the season 
So we'll now have a look at all of these changes in full size screen. Thank <laughs> you.